ukiyo-e, translated as Pictures of the Floating World, is a captivating art form from Japan's Edo period that vividly captures the essence of life's fleeting pleasures through paintings and woodblock prints. This genre of art primarily focuses on the vibrant life within the cities, offering a window into the leisurely pursuits and cultural vibrancy under the tranquil governance of the shoguns. With subjects ranging from sumo wrestlers and kurtsons to kabuki actors and geishas, the name ukiyo-e holds a profound philosophical significance, blending two concepts, yuki, which means transience, and yo, which stands for life. This term is deeply rooted in the Buddhist perception that our existence is just a fleeting illusion. However, as time went on, especially during the Edo period, the interpretation of Yukio began to change. It started to celebrate the pleasures and joys of the earthly life, indicating a significant shift in how people thought and felt about the world around them. This evolution reflects a broader change in the cultural mindset of the time. Ukiyo-e is distinguished by its unique artistic techniques and styles, including the use of aerial perspectives, precise detailing, clear outlines, and the application of flat colors. These elements, often depicted on screens or scrolls, continue the tradition of Yamato-e, an earlier form of Japanese art, while introducing a narrative quality to the artworks. Within the broad spectrum of ukiyo-e, various subgenres emerged, including images of beautiful women, erotica, portraits with exaggerated features, and detailed renditions of nature, such as the iconic Mount Fuji. The international exposure of ukiyo-e, particularly to Europe and America, marked a pivotal moment in art history. This cultural exchange, known as Japanism, profoundly influenced Western art movements like Impressionism, Art Nouveau and Modernism. This Yukiyo-e print, remarkable for its use of aerial perspective, a characteristic hallmark of Japanese art, captures a deeply intimate scene between two lovers, a theme explored with sensitivity and depth in the genre. At the heart of this artwork is a samurai warrior, identifiable by his prominently placed sword in the foreground, a symbol of his status and prowess. Beside him, a woman's presence is marked by her discarded musical instrument, its neck leading the viewer's eye towards the composition's edge, suggesting a moment of abandonment in favor of the connection she shares with the samurai. An outer robe, depicted as if caught in mid-air, adds a dynamic sense of movement, as though it has just been cast off in the heat of the moment. The interior space, defined by minimalistic horizontal and vertical lines, converges on the couple, whose bodies and garments meld in a dance of curvilinear forms. This blending is accentuated by the open panel on the left, revealing an external balcony and inviting the outside world into this private moment, albeit as a silent observer. The artist behind this evocative print, Moronobu, leverages his background in the textile industry to bring an exceptional level of detail and realism to the depiction of fabrics. The robes, animated in their portrayal, seem to breathe life, a testament to Moronobu's intimate understanding of how fabric contours and flows around the human body. His command over line work, possibly influenced by his experience with calligraphy, is evident through the precision and variability in line thickness, which skillfully outlines the figures and their surroundings. As the fabric of the lover's sleeves and robes parallel each other, they visually merge, 
symbolizing the unity of their beings in a moment of passion. This piece is identified as a potential example of Shunga, the Japanese art of erotic illustration, and is thought to possibly serve as the frontispiece for a series of 12 prints that delve into the intricate dance of sexual relations. The frontispiece, typically more reserved, acts as a nuanced introduction to the series, setting a decorous tone for the more explicit content that follows. In a captivating ukiyo-e print by the artist Harunobu, we are presented with a tender moment of everyday life, beautifully capturing the essence of early summer. The scene unfolds with a young woman, elegantly holding a bamboo rod in her left hand, a tool traditionally used for hanging clothes on a line. As she turns her head to look over her shoulder, her right hand is raised in a gentle gesture, signaling her son to halt his playful pursuit of a small chick. This intimate interaction between mother and child is set against a backdrop adorned with white Unohana flowers blooming along a fence, their presence signaling the arrival of early summer. Adding a poetic depth to the visual narrative, The print features a poem by the esteemed Fujiwara no Motozain, one of the 36 immortal poets. The poem, inscribed in a cloud-like shape at the upper part of the print, is gracefully translated by Jack Hillier. Blossoming now in our mountain village, the Yunohana flowers look like snow, still lingering on the hedge. Harunobu's artistry is evident in the dynamic composition of the print, where the flowing lines of the figures energetically curve from right to left, creating a harmonious contrast with the flowering branches that curve from left to right. This interplay of lines conveys a sense of graceful movement, bridging the exterior and interior worlds and evoking a feeling of natural harmony. Harunobu's pioneering approach to naturalism as seen through the depiction of an actual mother and child engaged in a simple yet profound activity, has left a lasting impact on the ukiyo-e genre. The influence of Harunobu's thematic and stylistic choices extends beyond the borders of Japan, notably inspiring Western artists such as Mary Cassatt. Cassatt's work, The Child's Bath, echoes the ukiyo-e tradition's emphasis on the mother-child bond utilizing line and design to convey deep emotional and relational nuances. By applying a limited yet vibrant palette of colors, including shades of green and pink, Harunobu achieves a unified and lively composition. This nuanced application of colors not only enhances the visual coherence of the scene, but also infuses it with a sense of vitality showcasing Harunobu's exceptional ability to blend form, color, and narrative into a cohesive and captivating artwork. This ukiyo-e print offers a captivating glimpse into the deeply ingrained ritual of bathing in Japanese culture, presenting a scene both intimate and communal with its depiction of women, either nude or partially robed, engaged in various activities associated with bathing. Unique within the realm of ukiyo-e for its exploration of the nude form, this artwork stands out as an exceptional representation of daily life, emphasizing the importance of bathing rituals. The print is meticulously structured as a double sheet, dividing eight women into two groups, with an additional poignant detail of a woman tenderly washing a baby. The artist skillfully employs a partially screened washing area to maintain a sense of modesty, showing only a woman's lower torso as she bathes. This careful portrayal hints at the private nature of the act, 
juxtaposed against the communal setting. To the composition's left, a subtle peek into the men's section through an open panel suggests a mirrored world of similar rituals, underscoring the shared human experience across genders. The strategic placement of water buckets creates a diagonal line that, along with the flower board's diagonal, directs the viewer's attention upwards, from the foreground where women kneel to the obscured bathers beyond. This dynamic use of vertical and horizontal lines contrasts with the soft, curvilinear forms of the women, each depicted with distinctive physical features and engaged in varied acts, highlighting the individuality amidst the collective activity. Notably, this print once belonged to Edgar Doga, the renowned Impressionist painter who drew inspiration from its compositional balance and the natural, unposed quality of the figures, reminiscent of scenes he captured in his own work. Pawn of the Pillow, a captivating series of 12 images presented in a folding album, showcases Yutamaro's mastery in the genre Shonga, traditional Japanese erotic art. The tenth print of this series brings us to a tea house setting, where two lovers share an intimate moment. The composition focuses on a woman, seen from behind as she reclines, her posture elegantly curving to reveal her left leg, with her clothing subtly slipping down. Opposite her, a man leans forward to kiss her, their forms merging in a fluid embrace highlighted through the sheer fabric of his robe. This interaction is delicately framed by their intertwined legs, with her foot gracefully reaching over behind his leg, enhancing the print's erotic charge. The use of a restrained color palette with red and black patterns imbues the scene with a profound emotional resonance. The backdrop of the tea house, the balcony railing, a yellow shutter, and a verdant plant contributes to a secluded atmosphere, further intensified by the presence of tea and a bowl of food, elements that underscore the couple's privacy and the intimacy of their encounter. The influence of Shonga on European art is profound, with artists such as Audrey Beardsley and Pablo Picasso drawing inspiration from its erotic themes and imagery. The appreciation of Shonga's explicit yet artistically rendered sexual subjects extended to notable figures like the sculptor August Rodin. Rodin's admiration for the dynamic postures and expressive reality captured in Japanese erotica reflects its significant impact on European artistic sensibilities. This Nishikai, a vibrant full-color print, offers a striking portrayal of three women celebrated for their beauty, each emerging from distinct walks of life within the urban milieu of Edo period Japan. On the left stands Takashi Mahisa, and on the right, Naniwa Kita, both waitresses at their family-owned tea houses. Centred among them is Tonomoto Toyohaina Abgija, marking a departure from the more conventional Lukioe focus on curtains. The inclusion of family crests, such as the oak leaf motif adorning Hisa's attire, adds a personal touch to each figure subtly narrating their individual stories and backgrounds. The artist's innovation extends to the medium itself, pioneering the use of nishikai and enhancing the print with mica dust to achieve a shimmering background effect. The depiction of the women in the okubai or big head style allows for a nuanced exploration of their personalities, highlighted through the subtle interplay of expressions and gazes particularly between Hisa and Kita. Their direct gaze hints at a rivalry stemming from the competitive nature of their family tea houses, 
which were notable gathering spots within their respective districts. This competitive spirit and the popularity of Kita and Iza fueled a narrative that transcended the confines of the print, inspiring Utamaro to revisit these figures in subsequent works and prompting other artists to capture the trio as well. This striking ukiyo-e print captures the celebrated actor Otani Onaiji in a powerful portrayal of his role as the malevolent servant, Yako Edebe. Through the use of bold lines and a minimalist approach, the print conveys a deep sense of malevolence. The character, notorious for his eagerness to execute his samurai master's commands, is depicted in the climactic moment of Mei capturing an intense emotional expression emblematic of Kabuki theatre's dramatic flair. The stark contrast between the white of Omaiji's skin and the dark outlines of his robe and hair accentuates his menacing expression and posture, creating a figure that is both flat and cut out, yet profoundly modernist in its realistic psychological depiction. The simplification to essential elements allows the actor along with the character he embodies, to be instantly recognizable by contemporary audiences through his attire and the family crest he adorns. Sharaku remains an enigmatic figure in the art world, with little known about his life or affiliations to any particular school. Active for a brief period between 1794 to 1795, Sharaku's portfolio consists predominantly of actor portraits, amounting to around 140 prints. Sharaku's dynamic compositions and keen psychological insights have posthumously earned him acclaim as a master of Yakushai, the genre of actor prints. His work, particularly noted for its bold profiles and unique portrayal of individual characters, significantly influenced Henri Toulouse Lautrec. The French artist admired Sharaku's exaggerated expressions and distinctive portrayals, incorporating similar stylistic elements into his own depictions of Parisian nightlife, including the vibrant scenes of the Moulin Rouge. <laughs> This internationally acclaimed print, known both as The Great Wave and by its alternative title, Under the Wave of Kanagawa, captures a towering wave, masterfully rendered in Hokusei's preferred shade of Prussian blue, with its crest breaking into stylized white foam. Dominating the left portion of the canvas, the wave's dynamic curvilinear form appears poised to engulf Mount Fuji creating a dramatic tension enhanced by Hokusei's skilled use of perspective and the strategic positioning of the horizon in the lower third of the composition. Amidst the tumultuous waves, several Japanese boats are depicted, their elongated, curved structures and contrasting colors mirroring the wave's motion, contributing to the overall sense of imminent impact. This scene, capturing the precarious moment before the waves break, juxtaposes the symbol of the immortality represented by Mount Fuji against the transient, vulnerable boats, underscoring the ephemerality of existence and the fleeting nature of supposed eternals. Timothy Clark, an art curator, hailed 100 views of Mount Fuji, the series from which this print originates as one of the greatest illustrated books. Comprising three volumes with a total of 102 depictions of the mountain, the series was produced during a period when Hokusei, known for frequently changing his artist name, referred to himself as Gakyo Rojin, translate to the old man crazy to paint, or Manji that translate to 10,000 things or everything, indicating his ambition to create a comprehensive masterpiece. Hokusei's innovative and prolific body of work has had a profound influence on numerous European artists, including Claude Monet, 
who displayed a print of the great wave in his Giverny home. Other admirers such as Paul Gauguin, August Roden, Edgar Doga and Vincent van Gogh collected his prints, drawing inspiration from his artistic techniques and themes. Hokuse's portrayal of the human figure in natural, unposed activities influenced Doga, while his use of curvilinear forms and the rhythmic flow of his compositions played a pivotal role in shaping the Art Nouveau movement, demonstrating Hokuse's enduring impact on the evolution of Western art. This print captures a dynamic scene of travellers navigating a winding road through reed-filled fields adjacent to a lake, with the iconic silhouette of Mount Fuji positioned to the left. The composition vividly portrays the sudden assault of the wind, most notably affecting a woman in the lower left. Her clothing is caught in a whirlwind, obscuring her face, while the documents she had been carrying are whisked away joining the debris of leaves from two slender trees caught in the tempest. Nearby, a man struggles to hold on to his hat against the wind's force, and another gazes upwards as his hat is taken by the gust, illustrating the wind's unpredictable power. The bending trees, leaning with the wind's direction, accentuate the scene's dynamic movement. Hokusei's keen observation of everyday life, illustrating how an unexpected gust can disrupt the mundane, acts as a metaphor for nature's capricious influence. The landscape itself, with its undulating lines and repeating colors, stretches into the vastness, contrasted by the minimalistic depiction of the horizon and Mount Fuji which stands as a serene, unchanging backdrop to the transient chaos below. This depiction has resonated with and inspired modern artists, including Jeff Wall, whose work, A Sudden Gust of Wind, pays homage to Hokusei's original. This triptych, inspired by the story of Yuto Yasutaka, presents a vivid, dynamic narrative across three connected panels. In this evocative depiction, an enormous animated skeleton dominates the right panel, stretching menacingly into the center to loom over Mitsukuni and his companion. On the left, Princess Takiyasha, the daughter of a fallen warlord rebel against the Emperor, is seen invoking a spell from a scroll to summon the skeleton. The mission of Mitsukuni, dispatched by the Emperor to seize control of the castle, sets the stage for this supernatural encounter. The artwork is meticulously structured, with diagonal floor lines sweeping from left to right guiding the viewer's gaze towards the imposing skeleton and integrating the triptych into a cohesive panorama. Drapes that traverse from the left into the central panel accentuate the tension and fear of Mitsukuni and his companion, as evidenced by Mitsukuni's pallid, turned face in the face of the spectral threat. Kuniyoshi's mastery is evident in his fusion of detailed Western anatomical knowledge with the refined Japanese artistic sensibility, creating a scene that is as anatomically precise as it is evocatively Japanese. This blending of influences is a hallmark of Kuniyoshi's work, where he often merged traditional Japanese stories and folklore with Western elements to craft narratives that are both psychologically engaging and culturally resonant. 
Such narratives, deeply rooted in Japanese literature, folklore, and history, are emblematic of the Yukioi genre. They range from single images that capture kabuki actors embodying well-known stories, instantly recognizable to contemporary audiences, to expansive works like Hokusei's 100 Ghost Tales, which delve into the supernatural. Kuniyoshi's Triptychs stands as a compelling example of this tradition, marrying the fantastical elements of Japanese lore with the grounded Yiwe realism brought by his anatomical precision. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me continue creating more content like this. Thank you.